Wanda had already climbed eight nine thousanders, and this happened to be her ninth mountain. Her story to finally make it to K2 in Kanchenjunga had a long chain of events. It all began in the 1970s, when shortly after marrying her then love and husband, a mathematician, Wojciech Rukowicz, Wanda went on a hike in the Pamir Mountains with Polish and Nova Suburs climbers. They climbed a mountain that was afterwards given Lenin's name. Wanda successfully ascended her first mountain over 7,000 meters. Although the ascent was not enjoyable, the mountaineer found it difficult to get along with the other male members of the expedition. Even though she started her expeditions back in 1972, when she went to Gasherbrum 3, 7,952 meters, what got her to fame and success was her winter expeditions to the north side of Matterhorn the following year. Wanda's big break came in 1978 when she enlisted in a global expedition under the direction of Carl Hurlikoffer, whom she had previously met on a doomed expedition to Nanga Parbat. Hurlikoffer invited her to be part of the German group who were moving to Everest. It was led by Pierre Mazud. The expedition wasn't that favorable in Wanda's condition. Even though she was entirely rejected by the squad, her name was now on the list of the top mountaineers. She ascended to the summit alone and without oxygen on the expedition because of all the oxygen had been exhausted during the ascent. There were few incidents that led her to think about all women expeditions, and so she became the pioneer of all women expeditions. And so it began in 1982, when she led the first women's expedition to K2, situated in the Karakoram Range on the Pakistan-China border. K2 is notorious for its unpredictable weather, treacherous terrain, and sheer difficulty. Wanda, along with a team of experienced climbers, set out to conquer this formidable challenge. It was open to two French mountain climbers and nine Polish mountain climbers. Rukowicz was an outspoken supporter of segregating men's and women's climbing groups at the time. She believed that climbing in mixed teams offended women and denied them the opportunity to demonstrate that they can exert the same amount of effort as men. Sometimes Wanda was hosting an all-women expedition. Sometimes she would go on male expeditions with a backpack as heavy as the males and with no extra support from any of them. This was one thing that every other mountaineer who knew her was jealous of her outmost devotion and strength toward climbing. And sometimes she would go all alone without any oxygen or equipment. She had superhuman power within her. In 1982, when she was holding an all-women expedition, she faced a lot of serious injuries. After an incident during a series of Caucasus excursions, she was forced to use walkers to walk. A mountaineer who had fallen from a higher elevation swept her off a glacier while she was descending, breaking her leg. She perceived it as a practice for the arduous endeavor of scaling one of the most difficult Himalayan peaks. The journey to climb K2 was not easy for her. It took a lot of years to make it possible every time. Wanda faced a lot of injuries that left her broken. But the strength to endure all the struggles was more than the spirit to leave it all. She did not let the hurdles come her way. Even though she did not recover from her injuries, she rose alongside the women along the endless Baltoro Glacier. She then insisted on going from camp to camp alone. Wanda was restless and wanted to start the journey toward K2. So in 1984, she came with three Polish women mountaineers. But again, the weather didn't lead them to move ahead. The following year, Wanda's Swiss guide, Stephanie Schaefer, ascended Aconcagua and the Argentine Andes in alpine style. It is the tallest mountain on the American continent at 6,962 meters, and it's no easier to climb than the Himalayan peaks. Wanda recorded it in her diary as one of the most difficult climbs. Wanda coordinated a women's expedition to Nanga Parbat in the same year, 1985 utilizing the money and equipment left over from the failed attempts to reach K2. And so, with lots of hurdles and hardships, she, along with three other Polish women, reached the summit of Nangam Parbat. Even after all these successful attempts to reach the highest of the mountains in the world, the desire to reach K2 and become the first woman to reach K2 never died in her. She had this feeling that she would one day be successful. When she returned to Poland, she had problems with the government's contribution to the cost of her travels. She decided to stop going on excursions. Instead, she decided to join collective groups using the money she earned from making films. In exchange for a contract, she consented to provide movie trailers to an Austrian television company. 
she participated in a tiny French expedition to K2 in exchange for an advance. She was accompanied by Michelle Parmentier, who had also reached 8,000 meters, Lillian and Maurice Barad, a close-knit couple of climbers who had also scaled Nangam Parbat and Gashabram II and them, wanted like the couples as they were supportive of her. They planned a light expedition with no oxygen and without fixed camps, and that is what Wanda always wanted, so she instantly joined her. Wanda arrived at the summit before her pals, who had stopped for a cup of hot coffee. She was overjoyed to be the first female to reach the summit of K2. She wrote her name, the time and date of her arrival, the name Lillian Barard, and the words First Women's Ascent on a business card. She hid it in a plastic bag beneath a boulder near the mountain summit. In this way, she became the first woman to summit the K2 ad without any help. She had been at the highest point of her life. It was May 1992, when Wanda and a French expedition started her journey to the mountain Kanchenjunga, the third highest mountain in the world. But little did she know that it'd be her last summit too. The team's expedition commented with high hopes and cautious optimism. Wanda, known for her resilience and indomitable spirit, aimed to become the first woman to reach the summit of Kanchenjunga. The journey, however, would prove to be the most daunting yet. The journey was not easy, as four of the climbers gave up at the very start because of some serious illnesses and injuries. It was an expedition of six people, and since four of them left earlier, and now only Wanda and her friend from Mexico, Carlos Carsolio, were left, they decided to not give up this early and moved on towards summiting the mountain. They decided to leave Camp 4, which was 7,590 meters, in the early morning at around 3.30 a.m. The plan was to reach the mountain directly Carlos, who was fast and full of energy, was able to summit the mountain first. He reached the summit just after 12 hours of walking. However, Wanda was a bit slower and was running out of energy, so it took her longer to reach the mountain. As Carlos was descending, he saw Wanda, who was still climbing towards the top and was 300 meters away from reaching it. Carlos knew that Wanda will do it and she will conquer the title of being the first woman to reach Kanchenjunga. She was full of motivation and determination, but he didn't know that he was seeing Wanda for the last time as she never descended back to the base camp. She was never seen after this last summit. She was lost on 12th May 1992 and never seen again. Her body was never found, but three years after Wanda's disappearance, an Italian expedition was on their way to the summit of the mountain and saw a body of a woman. They decided to give her a proper burial. When they went close to her, one of the mountaineers said that it might be the body of Wanda. But as the face was not in good condition, they decided to take pictures of the body and show it to the other team members back to the base camp. Then they gave her a proper burial. Though the face was unrecognizable, the height and the build of the body made it sure that it was Wanda Rukwicks. The clothing also indicated that it was her. So it was assumed that she might have reached the mountain, Kanchenjunga, in there, an avalanche caught her when she would have been descending back from the opposite side of the mountain. However, another group of mountaineers indicated that it was not Wanda, but a Bulgarian climber, Yordanka Dimitrova, who was also caught by an avalanche in the southwest of Kanchenjunga. But whatever the truth is, we cannot say that Wanda did not climb the mountain. Seeing how determined, tough, and strong-headed she was, she may have made it to the top. Wanda will always remain in our memories, and her name will always be remembered as a high-spirited, strong, and incredible mountaineer.